This brand new tool from Sentry allows me to debug my full stack applications in a way that I've never seen before. You can trace everything from errors in the front end all the way to your backend request and database calls. This is really gonna change how we debug full stack applications. Let's take a look. So let's be honest, when we debug our JavaScript applications, most of us just use console.log. I mean, that's the reality. I've created videos on how to set up true debugging with VS Code, and that is an awesome experience, but a lot of us just use console log, and that's totally fine, whatever works. So that is an option, but there's also a lot more to the world of debugging. And what I've never really seen is something that allows you to kind of debug full stack applications all together in kind of one place. And that means from the front end to an API request in the back end, and maybe the data get, that gets sent off to a database, for example. And this has now changed for me after I found Spotlight, which was first announced during the launch of Astro 4.0 on December 5th, 2023. So I have a video on Astro 4.0 if you want to go check that out. But one of the really big things in here that I think I'm most excited about is the Astro Dev toolbar. Now, what this is, if we look in this running application, is a toolbar on your application that uh, you can load all these different things onto and different companies can create their own plugins. Now, Sentry was the first one to kind of create a plugin in there. And this is the Spotlight plugin, which we'll talk about today. So I'll put a link to this article that kind of gives the background of why this was created. Apparently it's based on the Django debug toolbar. Never heard of that. I've never really worked with Django. If you've worked in Python and Django, maybe you've heard of this before, but it's basically what we're going to see. This is basically a port of that into the JavaScript world. And in this case, specifically with Astro, but just gives you deeper insights into all the things that you can see with your application. So if we go back to this running application, this is the full stack demo for my Astro uh, course. And so this has a blog post page, but in this blog post page, it does a lot of dynamic things. It's not just a static page. So we, uh, we load the post and the author information from embedded markdown, but then we get comments and reaction details from Zeta database. So if we scroll down to the end of this article, we can see we have our reactions here. These are actually sending live requests to a backend API that then interact with a database. And then we can see our comments in here that are loaded from the database as well. So if we wanted to take a look at this inside of Zeta, I've got reactions uh, that you just saw, and then you saw comments as well. Then we have users for authentication and that sort of stuff. So this is completely full stack, even though you think of Astro as being just a static site generator. So let's look at what we get by default. Let us refresh this page. And let's go down and select the spotlight uh, by Century plugin. Now, this is something that you have to install, but it's pretty easy. But you go in here and you see traces and you basically get like the first set of requests that happens for loading this page. So it's a get request to slash blog slash and then the dynamic route of slug. So the specific one. So you look in here and you can see all sorts of things. You can see the individual scripts that are being loaded from node modules, et cetera. You can scroll down and it's maybe like a little bit more detailed than we need, but you can see like very specific things in here and how much time they take to be able to load these components, et cetera. But we get down to the bottom and not only do we see the JavaScript and stuff that's loaded on the front end, we also see the requests that are happening in the back end. Now more context, uh, all of this data is loaded on the server. So when a request comes into this given page, all of this code here happens on the server before the page is loaded. So it's server side rendered. So this is showing us the three database calls that happen on the back end on the server before this page is actually loaded, which is wild and really neat. So at a quick glance, you can tell how long each one of these calls takes. And you can see we have 200 milliseconds, 300, 150 or so. So that's a significant amount of time before the actual page is being loaded, which immediately gives me an idea of like, hey, maybe there's some optimization I could do around this. Now we can also dig into the, each one individually and the way Zeta works is we're not going to see like a, a database connection as you might be used to. This is actually sending a post request to Zeta and that's how it handles uh, doing queries and updates, et cetera. So this is sending a post request to this database with this URL and you can see it's Astro course uh, demo and then it's the branch of main. Now Zeta has branching so we can differentiate between different branches of data. But we can see this is Astro course demo database and then the main branch. So you can see that that works out there. And then we're sending a query to the comments table and we can see the result that we get back. We can see how long this thing takes, et cetera. So some really cool information to kind of break that down, which is nice. Now, if we were to go in and look at the next one, we see that it makes a uh, request to the reactions table to do an aggregate. Basically what that's doing is trying to get a count of how many times each reaction 
has been applied to a given blog post. So that's what the aggregate is. And then we also have the uh, reactions based on the logged in user. So if we go back and look at this, you can press escape to get rid of it. We need to know not only how many times people have reacted, but also whether or not me, the user that's logged in has reacted. Because if this thing has been reacted, but it not by me, it would show the count of one, but it would be kind of grayed out. So this is specifically suggesting that I have reacted to it, which I think is pretty cool. So let's go back. And uh, those are the, the three different uh, database queries that happen. Again, you can see exactly where it's being sent to, the type of request that is going, and then how long those take, which is really, uh, really pretty amazing for debugging. Now we can take this one step further and we can add a comment. So we can say uh, testing for a video. Now what this does, if we look inside of here, it sends a post request uh, to the current route they're on and then it reloads the page and redirects the user back down to the comments page. So what we should see in Spotlight, if we go ahead and add a comment, in Spotlight, if we go and reveal here, we should see our post to that slug endpoint. So you can see that we send the request to the API endpoint. We can see the status that's returned, which is a 302. That means it's redirecting us back to that same page and then uh, taking us back down to the comments. So we can see that in addition to the fact that we can actually see this database request. So you can see where we send the request to, to the comments table. We can see it's a post. We can see we get a 201 successful status and we can see uh, the HTTP method query, et cetera. So we're able to track not only the API request or the backend request that happened before loading the page, also the backend request that happened after that as well. Now, another thing that we can uh, check is if we were to add uh, something in here that throws in air, we'd be able to see that as well. So let's say we go into emoji reactions and let's just, uh, let's actually do this when we click on one. So let's go into the individual emoji reaction and inside of that handler, let's just throw a new air of, uh, now this is obviously just for demo dummy purposes, et cetera. But if we scroll back up to our emojis and try to click on one of these, we should have an error take place. And you see the little alert down here, the little uh, red button there. And we can go underneath the errors tab and we can see this here. Now this is not all that different than what's built into the Chrome console. So again, this is much more useful for doing full stack stuff, but you can kind of stay within that same window and you get a little bit more detail than you get here. So inside of this one, it tells you which file to go to and which line. That works. This also tells you the same thing, but also gives you a little preview of the code. So you get a little bit more visually of what you see there. So you can actually get to that same level of code detail if you click on the details there, but it pops up for you by default. So anyway, Spotlight now is providing uh, full stack tracing and visibility into your locally running application. Now it's good to know that this doesn't just work in Astro, although I think it's kind of designed as a first class citizen for Astro. But if you check out uh, Spotlight, you can customize this and use it for any framework that you're working on to get the same type of experience. So I think this is pretty unique. This is kind of changing again, the way that we debug full stack applications because I've never really had a tool that would give me one centralized place to track front end to back end to database requests on the server, et cetera, like all those things tied in one place. So I'm curious what you think about this. Is this something you can see yourself using or do you have an alternative tool that gives you something similar to the experience that I just showed? Again, I haven't seen one myself. So I think this is a super big improvement on debugging experience. And it's also really cool for me that it's first announced inside of Astro, which I think is one of the best frameworks out there. Now I do wanna leave you and plug my Astro course. So if you're interested in building that whole entire thing that we just looked at, going full stack with Astro 4.0, getting into database calls, server-side rendering, static pages, et cetera, all those things, you can check out uh, my Astro course at astrocourse.dev. And if you're just interested in kind of updates on my content, you can find my newsletter at jameshuquick.com slash newsletter, or just scrolling down to the bottom on the homepage. There's a link inside of the description as well that you can check out. Anyway, I hope you think this is cool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.